words also, verse number 19. Bhuta gramasa evayam Bhutva bhutva praliyate Ratya game vasha partha Prabhavatya haragame Bhuta gramasa evayam Bhutva bhutva praliyate Ratya game vasha partha Prabhavat Ragami ah, Bhagwan says that Bhuta Gramaha. This Bhuta Grama means all the beings, Stavar and Jangam, all the all the all the beings of this world, this whole cosmos, whole universe, Bhuta Gramaha. There are multitudes of varieties of being. On earth itself, we have so many varieties of living beings. Actually, life is one, but it, its expressions are many, 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 countless. Every, though every day there must be so many beings who are getting extinct and maybe new forms of beings are coming up. So, constantly, it's a dynamic life. Constantly, it is, it is modifying, changing and expressing through various forms, various life forms, taking the material from the world, the life expresses. Like on earth, the life expresses in a particular way because that is the material available here. Oxygen is available or whatever things are available. So our body and everything takes the material from this world. Maybe on some other planet, the life might be expressing in some other way. That's what now the scientists are trying to find out in some other way. They might be breathing some other, um, other what, gas. They might be eating something else. Hmm? Instead of pizza, they might be eating something else. Or some other food, whatever. But life is same. Because that life is expression of that consciousness. And that life expresses through the forms, the multitude of forms. So all of us are, are that, uh, that drop of light or the spot of light expressing in this particular body. So we have our own individuality, we have our own personality. The supreme, our nature is same, but each one of us we have our own individual personality based on our thoughts, emotions, and our samskars and uh, things which we carry from our past. We have our own individual personality. Hmm. It's like the snow which falls. I mean, here it doesn't fall, but just imagine snowflakes. They say that snowflakes, thousands of them, Millions of them, they fall. And each and every snowflake has got a different design. That's what they say. I have not seen. It has got a beautiful design. Each snowflake, it has got a beautiful design. So all of them are essentially water only. H2O. But each snowflake has its own personality its own individuality. Hmm. Similarly, all of us are that pure consciousness expressing as life, but each expression is different, is unique, is, is having its own beauty and speciality. And this unique personality, it is again and again, it takes birth, it dies, and again is born. It dies and born again. Dies and born again. Bhagavan says, Bhuta gramasa evayam. Same set of beings. Sa eva means those beings only who were uh, there in the previous kalpa, in the previous 
life cycle or the world cycle, same set of beings who have not attained the state of realization, who are not liberated, same set of beings, bhuta grama sa eva ayam, bhutva bhutva praleyate, they are again and again born and again they dissolve, again they take birth and again they die. During one day of Brahmaji, millions of time one takes, keep on taking birth and dying. And when Brahmaji goes to sleep, all the beings again, they rest for some time. For 43 lakhs, 20,000 multiplied by 1,000 years, they rest. Then when Brahmaji wakes up, again everyone is born. It goes on and on and on, non-stop. Hmm. It's like a cycle. It's like the sun rising and setting. So many times, every day, same story. Every day the sun rises and every day it sets. Again it rises, again it sets. So Bhuta Grama Sa Evayam, all of us, we have come into this world in different form for millions and millions of time. Not as human beings, maybe as different types of creatures. Human beings, we might have come recently then, few, I mean, lifetime before. But otherwise, like so many variety of creatures, maybe as mosquitoes, we might have come different uh, so many times. Ne? Big mosquito, small mosquito, variety of mosquito, dengue mosquito, this mosquito, that mosquito. All variety we must have tried, because as dying, as one mosquito, we must have said, oh, mosquito, kitna acha. He's a better mosquito than me. Next life, I want to become a this mosquito. What is the difference between a mosquito and a fly? Mosquito can fly, but fly cannot mosquito. <laughs> so, they must have thought that, oh, let me become a fly, or let me this. So like that, so many lifetime one must have gone through all this variety of beings. Bhuta grama sa evayam bhutva bhutva praliyate again and again taking birth, dying. Ratriya game avasha. When do we, all these beings, they not only die constantly, but also ratriya game at the night, night of Brahmaji, all beings again go into a state of unmanifestation. Ratriyagame avashaha. Avasha means helplessly. Helplessly we are born and we die. See, there are some people who say, no, no, I don't believe in rebirth. I don't believe in previous birth. See, if one believes in the uh, laws of physics, one believes in basic laws which we experience in this lifetime also, then we will, uh, we will also logically believe in the rebirth. One law is that uh, without cause, there cannot be any effect. And if the cause is there, the effect should be there. So if one experiences certain things in one lifetime, then it must have a cause. If one experiences at a subtler level, at the level of our mind and intellect and all, there must be a cause to give that experience. And if we have performed certain actions in this lifetime, but we have not got the result, then we have to say that we will get the result in future. Because the cause is there, so effect will also be there. Hmm. So our life is the is caused by the previous life, and this life becomes the cause of the future. So, uh, logically also, one comes to understand the, this, uh, that we had a life before, and we will have in future also. And there are various experiences a person has, sometimes they remember their past life, and that also can be uh, another proof but the greatest proof is that the scriptures talk about it, great realized masters talk about it, and also there are some yogis who consciously can remember their past lives. In fact, even Gautam Buddha, great master, enlightened master, he also talked about his past lives. 
So, Bhuta Grama, again and again we are born and we die. Ratryagame, Avasha Partha, Prabhavati, Aharagame. Then again when Brahmaji wakes up, again the entire cosmos comes into being. So the world is, is a cycle. It is not created from at one particular time. It is a cycle. That is the concept. And our scriptures don't talk about that word creation. That word creation is also can be misleading. Our scriptures talk about the world as projection or, or birth, like srishti. Srishti means born, to take birth. Just like a child is born, the child is all, was already there in the mother's womb and it takes birth. Similarly, or like the seed becoming the tree, the, the entire tree in its uh, subtlest form, in its unmanifest form, was there in the seed. It just manifests. It takes the material from the world and it manifests as a tree. Similarly, the entire world remains in its unmanifest form when Brahmaji, the cre divine creator, goes to sleep as though, and then from that only the entire world gets projected. So, Ratryagame Avasha Partha Prabhavati Aharagame. So, in this way, this life and death chakra keeps on happening. Therefore, Bhagavan says, what we should do? We should try to attain that which is imperishable. What is that which is imperishable? He says, Paras tasmatu bhavonyaha Avyakto vyaktat sanatanaha Yassa sarveshu bhuteshu Nashyatsu navinashyate Parastasmatu bhavo nyaha Avyakto vyaktat sanatanaha Yassa sarveshu bhuteshu Uh, he says that this uh, entire world goes into that unmanifest, that's called avyakta. Avyakta means unmanifest. Unmanifest means that which cannot be seen or experienced through our senses, nor by the mind, nor by the intellect. It has gone into a state of unmanifestation. It's like the like the seed, the whole tree is in its unmanifest form. It is not, not uh, manifest. Similarly, <clears throat> the entire world, when it goes into that state of unmanifestation, it is in Sanskrit, it's called a vet, unmanifest. But superior and subtler than this unmanifest is their supreme reality which is also called unmanifest because it is also unmanifest. Therefore, Bhagavan says that parastasmat, subtler and superior to this avyaktaha is that bhavaha, that reality which is also avyaktaha and but it is sanatanaha, it is eternal. This unmanifest world it's not eternal, it keeps on changing, modifying, uh, taking birth, dying and all. It is, it is conditioned by time. But that supreme reality is unconditioned by time. It is, it is also called unmanifest. So, parastasmat tu bhavaha anyaha. Anyaha, this reality is anyaha, different. Avyaktaha, it is also unmanifest, but it is different from what? Avyaktat, from that unmanifest, which is the unmanifest world. Sanatanaha, it is eternal, 
eternal unmanifest reality it is the very substratum of this uh, unmanifest world also just like our dream or deep sleep state see this waking dream and deep sleep state this drama keeps on happening constantly okay eh? but where is it happening it is happening in that pure consciousness Con consciousness is like the substratum in which the entire world or our world goes into state of unmanifestation then it manifest as dream and deep sleep state like we see in a cinema the screen is there and on the screen we see the cinema we see all the bright lights and all and sometimes the whole thing becomes dark entire the light goes away or something the whole place become dark so that darkness is also supported by that screen and when again the light comes that is also supported by the screen the screen remains hidden behind the behind that cinema similarly that pure consciousness is like the screen on which the drama of creation sustenance and dissolution takes place keeps happening so bhagwan says it is yas sarveshu bhuteshu nachatsu na vinashyati it is that which remains undestroyed or remains unaffected indestructible na vinashyati even when all the beings get destroyed even when all the entire creation get destroyed it remains untouched untouched even when the whole whole world even whole world after the cycle goes into the state of unmanifestation that supreme reality remains untouched in that only this unmanifest world exist and again it is projected science has not come at present it has not comprehended this supreme reality it has comprehended that the world comes into goes into a state of unmanifestation and again it gets projected but it has not yet understood that it is happening in a substratum which is real which is changeless see in order to experience change there should be a changeless substratum just like we see the river moving in order to see the flow the 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 river bed should be absolutely steady similarly in order to experience this changing phenomena which we experience as this world there should be a changeless substratum a changeless witness that changeless witness is that supreme reality ya sa sarveshu bhuteshu natsyatsu na vinashyati we doesn't get destroyed even when all the beings their forms and the world get destroyed so this is the supreme goal which one has to realize and attain It says in the next verse avyaktokshar ityuktah tamahu paramam gatim yamprapyana nivartante taddham paramam mama अव्यक्तोक्षर तमाहु परमाम गतिम हाँ भगवान से इस दिस इज अव्यक्त दिस सुप्रीम रियालिटी विच इज कॉल्ड अव्यक्त अनमेनिफेस्ट इट रिमेन्स अनमेनिफेस्ट देर फो इट कैनॉट बी कॉम्प्रिहेंडेड by the senses nor by the mind nor by the intellect it is 
it, it doesn't react to any of this any of these organs of perception and comprehension it is beyond all this cannot be comprehended at all so avyaktah but it is aksharah aksharah means indestructible doesn't undergo any modification any change doesn't get destroyed at all iti uktah thus is said in the great scriptures and thus is said by great masters iti uktah tam ahu paramam gatim and that supreme reality alone is called the ultimate destination ultimate gati paramam gati it is the ultimate destination of all beings all lokas as it was said before also that it is destructible even if one says oh bhagwan ka lok hai ye hai wo hai all lokas right from brahma lok to all other lokas are destructible they go into a state of unmanifestation but beyond that is the supreme reality and tam ahu paramam gatim that is the supreme gati gati means goal or destination hmm? which one reaches and bhagwan says yam prapya na nivartante having attained this one doesn't have to doesn't come back into samsar it's like one mistakes the uh, rope for the snake once the rope is comprehended then the no longer that fear of snake is there the snake doesn't come once one transcends all this confusion and ignorance and bondage and realizes that supreme reality there is no more coming back into samsara yam prapya na nivartante tad dham param mam bhagwan says that is my supreme abode that is fair from where i have come that is my supreme abode hmm? is a song also i don't remember guru ji sings ki wo that 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 is my supreme abode from where i have come pani na pavana na dharati akasvam it is there where there is no water there is no land there is no akash there is no vayu that is my supreme abode amar vah desh va jahan jahan se aayo all of us have come from that great this supreme place which is free from all concepts of time and space it's it's so fantastic that the brain cannot comprehend it so ta tad dham param mam bhagwan says that is my param dham so you attain that he is giving us invitation here to come to me become one with me and attain this supreme goal okay please tell us how to attain are baba i have told you no no please one more time last time yes please tell so bhagwan again he gives the upay he says in the next verse beautiful verse he says purusha sapara partha bhaktya labhyastva nanyaya यस्यान्तस्थानि भूतानि यस्यान्तस्थानि भूतानि येन सर्वमिदं ततम् पुरुषस्य परः पार्थ भक्त्यालभ्यस्त्वनन्यया यस्यान्तस्थानि भूतानि येन सर्वमिदं ततम् ha ah, this supreme dham this supreme reality is also called purushah 
पुरी शयनात पूर्णत्वात्वा बिकॉज इट परवेड्स एवरीथिंग एवरीथिंग इज परवेडेड बाय द सुप्रीम रियालिटी इट्स लाइक गोल्ड ऑर्नामेंट्स आर परवेडेड बाय गोल्ड ऑल मड पॉट्स आर परवेडेड बाय मड दिस ऑल दिस एंटायर कॉस्मोस वर्ल्ड इज परवेडेड बाय दैट सुप्रीम रियालिटी देफो इट इज कॉल्ड पुरुष और इट इज पूर्ण पूर्ण मीन्स कंप्लीट there is no incompleteness everything is there all that one can imagine and think about is there it is complete in space time concept it is complete and beyond all limitation purnah so purushas parah parth he parth he that person is parah beyond beyond all this world how can one attain it he says bhaktya labhya tu ananyaya here bhagwan gives that one path he says ananyaya bhaktya labhya you can attain this supreme state of realization through ananya bhakti devotion ananya means single pointed no other Anya means other. An Anya means no other. Hundred percent single-pointed devotion to the supreme reality will make us realize it. Ananya bhakti. Anya ashraya anam tyaga ha ananya ta. Narad bhakti zutra Narad ji says to give up all other support. and take only that supreme reality as the support is called ananya bhakti bhakti is not what generally we understand some emotions and all generally people have that feeling thoda emotion thoda rona dhona thoda ye wo that is bhakti but bhakti is something much subtler and it is that supreme love for that supreme reality but not love as the emotions it is a love accompanied by our understanding it is a combination of mind and intellect not only mind when love is only based on the mind then it is not complete love right it is emotions and if it's only intellect then also it is not complete it should be both the combination of our emotions and understanding therefore it is said you should love with your heart heart is that which is a combination of our mind and intellect it is said god resides in our heart it is it is not said that he resides in our mind or in our intellect or in our brain though he is everywhere but it is said he resides in our heart heart is a combination a confluence of our pure emotions and subtle thoughts or understanding there with that one has to direct that towards that supreme reality like in 12th chapter bhagwan says mayeva mana adhasva mai buddhim niveshaya you place your mind in me and place your intellect in me direct all your emotion towards me and direct all your understanding towards me both should go together if love is without understanding then it is not complete so both should go together hmm. in um, in vivek chodamani our shankaracharya ji defines this bhakti as आत्म अनुसंधान कॉन्स्टंटली मेडिटेटिंग ऑन दैट सुप्रीम सेल्फ कॉन्स्टंट अटेंशन ऑन दैट सुप्रीम सेल्फ ही डिफाइंस इट एज भक्ति नॉट एन इमेजनरी गॉड नॉट सम कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ गॉड नॉट सम आइडियाज अबाउट गॉड बट ऑन दैट सुप्रीम रियालिटी अवर लव फॉर दैट इज कॉल्ड भक्ति otherwise one may end up loving some form or some ideas that is not bhakti 
सो पुरुष स परपार्थ भक्त्या लभ्यह 